The subject now is constricted pericardites. My impression is that it is an easy diagnosis done by 2D echo and very different from what you see in the literature that emphasize the Doppler findings in this pathology to differentiate it from restricted cardiomyopathy. This diagnosis is made when we see in a subcostal view the diaphragm and the pericardium and notice how thick is the remaining pericardium at the right ventricular wall and usually is well demonstrated. But the main sign is that there is a fusion between the diaphragm and the whole thickened pericardium to the right ventricular wall in a way easily observed by noticing that these structures move together during the cardiac cycle. Here we see the diaphragm, the thickened pericardium and the right ventricular wall, all fused and we see in motion that these three structures will be moving as one, pulling the diaphragm. Just to remind the normal situation, notice that the two layers of the pericardium on the right ventricular wall side and on the diaphragm. There is no adherence between these structures and no thickening of the pericardium. Now see what happens in case of constricted pericardites. Notice right away how thickened is the pericardium and then that there is no more sliding of the pericardial layers on the right ventricle and on the diaphragm. Watch how the diaphragm is pulled by each contraction of the right ventricular wall. This is characteristic of constrictive pericardites. Note that these features are only evident in the subcostal view and in the diaphragm, right ventricular border. Any other echocardiographic views will show the lungs behind the pericardium and the great difference between the solid pericardium and the air in the lungs makes it too difficult to notice the thickness of the pericardium. As well, there will be no structure to show its adherence as noticed with the diaphragm. See this other example. Important thickening of the pericardium with pulling of the diaphragm when the right ventricular wall contracts. Notice also the pulling by the right atrial wall on the diaphragm. Look at the entrance of the IVC into the pericardial cavity as the thickened pericardium is also attached to the right atrial wall and to the diaphragm. And these structures move together with no sliding between them. Note also that there is no liquid in that region but a thickened pericardium. Another example of constrictive pericardites. The pericardium is calcified in this case. In a long X and in an apical view, the features are non-characteristic. But in this subcostal view, we see the liver, the diaphragm, the thickened and calcified pericardium, and the right ventricular wall are all fused together and no sliding. The first sign that we encounter suggests of a constrictive pericarditis during a routine echocardiogram study is when we take a M mode to measure the left ventricle and find this characteristic paradoxical IVS motion with this notch happening right at the beginning of diastole. Different from the normal notch that occurs simultaneously with the peak of the anterior motion of the posterior wall 
It is very sharp and has this aspect like the letter V. This sign is enough for suspecting the presence of constrictive pericardites. It is more evident during inspiration and is due to the feeling of the right ventricle cavity being more intense at this moment than of the left ventricle. Notice how it is difficult to evaluate the thickening of the movement of the pericardium due to the high reflection of this structure owing to the pericardium air interface. We may imply that the pericardium is thickened since the posterior wall is much more thickened than the IVS. This is due to the poor reflective interface between the myocardium and the thickened pericardium, which will be falsely considered as myocardium. The pericardial reflection will be mainly from its lung air interface and will appear as normal thickness. If you pay attention, you may distinguish two layers of slightly different echogenicity in the posterior wall. The anterior layer has the same thickness as the IVS and certainly is the true myocardium and the posterior layer, as far as the pericardial reflection, is the thick pericardium. See this example, the sharp V-shaped IVS notch at the beginning of diastole two layers of slightly different echogenicity in the posterior wall. One more example of the accentuated notch. There are other signs using MEMO. Look at this respiratory variation on the pulmonary valve, A wave. During inspiration, the A wave becomes quite large and has a normal size during expiration. This happens because since the right ventricle cannot expand during the pericardial constriction, the pressure inside this ventricle is increased after atrial contraction enough to open the pulmonary valve. Since the pressure in the pulmonary valve is normal or decreased during inspiration. Look here. This color and mode shows that there is no flow at the pulmonary A wave during expiration, but obvious flow during inspiration with the large A wave. Another finding in constrictive pericarditis is an intense respiratory variation seen at the mitral flow doppler. In normal conditions, the mitral flow does not vary much with respiration, but when there is constriction, there is intense decrease of the inspiratory velocities. Why does it occur? Because in normal conditions, during inspiration, there is accentuated decrease of the intrathoracic pressure, decrease the pressure in the pulmonary veins but it also decreases the, the pressure inside the left atrium since it is also inside the thoracic cavity. Hence, there is not much difference of the pressure between the pulmonary veins and the left atrium during the respiration. In constrictive pericarditis, though, this does not happen. The heart is inside a very thickened wall due to the pericardium and there is no transference of the intrathoracic pressure to the cardiac cavity. Now, during inspiration, the intrathoracic pressure decreases, and so does the pulmonary vein pressure, but the intraatrial pressure does not decrease, and so the mitral flow decreases. Another example. See how the mitral flow velocities decrease during inspiration. Beware that this mitral flow respiratory variation may occur in very obese patients and in those with respiratory assist device. The inferior vena cava flow meaning the suprahepatic vein flow also shows respiratory variations. 
There is a decrease of the systolic and diastolic waves during inspiration with increase during aspiration. There is also an expiratory flow reversal, very important during expiration.